As you guys know, Kawhi Leonard missed multiple games in the first round series between the Phoenix Suns and the Los Angeles Clippers. Well, it's just now being reported that in game one of that series, Kawhi Leonard suffered a torn meniscus. He was able to play through it in game two, but decided that he wouldn't be able to suit up in game three. Stephen A. Smith has been saying that the Clippers should force Kawhi Leonard into retirement, and that didn't go over too well with J.J. Redick. Check out this exchange. Steve Ballmer and the Los Angeles Clippers should force Kawhi Leonard to retire. I'm done. He needs to go home. Okay? It's so, over. I'm not in any way questioning the legitimacy of Kawhi Leonard's injury. A matter of fact, I'm fully embracing it. I've heard very, very alarming stories about his health. You see people talking about he's walking around or limping all the time. He is not a healthy individual. I'm not questioning his heart. I'm not questioning his courage. I'm not questioning any of that. The man's a two-time champion. He's a two-time MVP. I said it the other day, and I said it, and I regretted it only because we heard about some stuff that happened with his family, and I didn't know that was in the news and stuff like that. And I don't wish that enough. God bless you and your family, and I hope everything ends up well for everybody. But he is the absolute worst superstar you could possibly have on your team. He's barely ever there. And on top of it all, he does nothing to market or promote your franchise. Absolutely, positively nothing. He got $42 million this year. Him and Paul George are making identical dollars to the penny. $42 million in change this year. $45 million in change next year. And then a player option at $48 million. He couldn't go last year at all. Okay? Couldn't go this year when it counted. In the past, he couldn't go when it counted. Robbed at Toronto telling him, don't look for me for more than 65 games. Didn't even give him 60 games. Hasn't given you at least 60 games in the season in at least the last four years. Okay? And then the playoffs come. And this is the difference between him and a Paul George, or various other people. We see them get hurt. We'll watch Kawhi drop 38 one game like he did in game one against Phoenix, 31 in game two, walk off the court, and then the next thing you know, Ty Lue gets a net. He ain't, he ain't available today. The culminating point, the end result is, to me, it should be the end. And I say that because I, 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 I called some league officials this morning, and I want to know specifically, what can you do to get rid of Kawhi Leonard and make sure he get his money? He got sure as policy. He, 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 he could make it, and you could, you, could, you could carve it out through the years, make sure he gets every penny. Just give him his money and go. Because you can't rely on him. You got to move on. If you're the Clippers, you got to move on. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, I mean this in the nicest way possible to both of you, but listening to each of you right now, it's very obvious that you've played zero high-level basketball, and you do not understand the requirements of doing that. And I do mean that in a nice way. Okay. Uh, you bring I'll up, respond in a no, second. No, no, hold on. You bring up Zion. Yes. I, I, I talked about this when we talked about Zion. I yeah, you brought, him up, you brought up Zion. Trying to play coming off a, a hamstring injury, a serious hamstring injury, I've had to deal with it multiple times in my career. I, I popped it grade three when I was in college. There's a, there's a weeks-long mental hurdle to come back and play, to be able to just do a simple closeout. A sprained ankle is very different than a sprained knee. A sprained knee for someone who has torn a quad, quad tendon and who has torn their ACL is very different than someone playing on a hobbled ankle in the 1970s. It's a terrible analogy. When it comes to Zion, I completely disagree with JJ Redick. He was in warmups doing windmill dunks and 360 dunks, and the moment the game started, he said he couldn't play. He said he was physically fine and perfectly healthy, but he didn't feel like Zion. If there is a mental hurdle, then Zion should be focusing all of his energy on that and not doing dunks and warmups. And if this was the regular season, there would be no issue. It's the fact that it was in the play-in game and their season was on the line. He could have tried playing for a few minutes and if he couldn't go, he couldn't go. But instead, it was a big slap in the face to say that you're fully healthy and you do dunks and warm-ups just to end up not playing in the end. And even as someone who had the injury, if he had fully recovered, I don't think JJ Redick would have sat out of that play-in game. I understand the frustration. Mm -hmm with the load management issue. What we're talking about here and questioning his injury, and you say, I'm not questioning his injury. You just said we saw Paul George get hurt. We, we didn't see Kawhi get hurt. 
Let's give the guy some credit. He did it in game one. He went out there and battled game two. Guess what? Mm -hmm. If he could play, he would play. Mm -hmm. I want to get clarification on this worst superstar. Mm -hmm. Do you not have any empathy mm -hmm. for someone who has came back from two major leg injuries? Okay. Do you not? I do. Okay. I'm going to answer your questions. I'm just waiting for you to finish. Okay. Okay. And I, the last and by, the way, the, by the way, to the rundown, forget any damn question you got after this. What he just brought up on a multitude of levels, I'm responding to this. Right. I just so want to say one other ahead. thing real Take quick. Take your time. I just want to say one Take other thing real quick to yeah. answer the original question. Yes. Because I knew you were going to go off the rails here. Okay. And obviously I knew you would go off Absolutely. the rails here too. Mm -hmm. The idea of getting rid of them, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the options are. Mm -hmm. For the Clippers, if they, they were, they're not. you can't get rid of them. Especially with, especially with so, Kawhi. Especially with Kawhi. I was talking about Kawhi, not Paul George. But J.J. Reddick, first two things you first. You talked about it's very obvious that we didn't play high-level basketball. Newsflash, in this case especially, I don't have to. I've been covering the NBA since you were eight years old. You think we make this up? You think we don't speak to owners, coaches, teammates, contemporaries? People who are in the league who do know what you know. Tony Parker is a champion. When he was in San Antonio, he questioned Kawhi Leonard. That is a fact. Look it up. It's in the archives. Okay? You have several people who have looked at Kawhi. We know nobody's questioned his work ethic. Nobody has questioned how much he cares. Nobody has questioned what a dog he is when it comes to playing big-time basketball in big-time moments. But he is clearly unreliable because of his health. But he's never unreliable when it comes to getting to the negotiating table and getting every penny that he deserves. Now, we get to the latest part about him as a star in Los Angeles. You know how many Clipper fans that I know? That every single game they complain about Kawhi Leonard not being available. It's the you fact know what's that interesting though? You, you bring up this idea of like trading information, and I'm very curious because you actually said you actually didn't provide any information about Kawhi other than Tony Parker saying years ago that he. Kawhi wasn't great in I San Antonio. Had, uh, hold on a second. Hold, hold, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Because when I talk to people for the Clippers, they talk about how hard he works, how much he puts into it. Yeah. I'm not saying that they Takeaways don't. from literally the guys first year with him. I can't believe this guy's workouts. Let me tell you the difference between me and those members for the Clippers organization. They do say that. You're absolutely right. But they also say what I say. They just don't say it the way that I say it. Dan, we just wish it was better, you know. There's nothing we could do. So because of that, you no, no, I'm want, saying you, they, 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 they say they say no. I'm saying retire. I'm saying if you know you're not going to be available. I mean, and I'm not saying he knows like definitively knows, but his health has been so bad, according to what they have said. It has been so bad. You'd have had people looking at him and wondering, damn, how long does he have? His health has debilitated to such a degree he cannot rely on him. So just move on. When you are making $43 million a year and you're the why best. Why is that so important? Because you know? it is. Why? Because, why? You, because it is. Well, you, because you, there's a responsibility. You sat up here, you sat up there's here. a responsibility when you, you make sat, that kind of money. You sat up here last week. Right. And you said you would take Kawhi over Kevin I do. Durant. Okay, I love him. Hold on. So. But I don't trust If him. someone is willing to pay him that money. Right. Because of who he is when he's on the court. Right. Why is that an important in your argument to bring up the money issue? Well, do you think Steve Ballmer is happy right now with with no one's happy. And forty-three million dollars? And and one other He's thing the about one that wrote the check. Yeah, here again, I agree with JJ's overall points. I don't think Kawhi Leonard should retire. He's too young and too good to give up just yet. But of course, the money matters. Are we really going to pretend like it doesn't? Kawhi Leonard making that much money and not playing hurts the Clippers more than any other player on that roster. It's common sense. He's strangleholding their ability to get quality players to help win in the regular season and in the playoffs by not showing up to work. The load management hurts his team. And if he's going to continue doing so, he should take less money. It's common sense. You have a responsibility when you make that much money. You can't just play 50 games and then miss the playoffs and expect to continue getting paid 40 something million dollars a year. Are the Clippers just supposed to keep giving him max contracts and then have him not play basketball? They're paying for his service. He needs to provide it. I understand that JJ Redick is pro player and some people are going too far with the Kawhi Leonard thing. Mad Dog is pointing out things that happened in the 1980s and saying that guys played with concussions and broken bones. 
No one is expecting players to do that anymore. But it's not too much to ask for a max contract player to play more basketball games. It's just not. If he's not going to play more games to help them get a higher seed, or he's not going to play in the playoffs, then he should take less money. His next contract should be significantly less than the one he's currently on. Because if you're not going to be on the court, you shouldn't get paid like you are. I mean, well, he, and, he, and, he, he, he wants to be known, he wants to be in L.A. He, but Doug, you, do you think do. retiring's a bit no. extreme? Yes, I do. But here's what I, here's what I t disagree with you guys totally on. When you're this kind of player and you're the leader of that team, you got to go out there and get... Kevin McHale played the postseason with a stress fracture in his foot. He played... The, he was limped around the whole postseason in 88. Look it up. Kareem played with a patch on his eye. Look it up. West in his 16... You can laugh all you want about the history of the sport. His logo is the... His, he's the logo. He averaged 43 a game against the Celtics in 68-69, was the MVP of the series. Only time it's ever happened, a losing team, the MVP, he played with a torn hamstring the whole series. The whole series. Bird, who I saw with my own eyes, in person and everything else, against Indiana in game five, concussed, knocked out for 15 freaking minutes, in the locker room, came back out in game five, First round and beat the Pacers. You know what he said after the game? Larry, how'd you, why'd you do that? And he couldn't walk at this when he had a bad back. You know what? I'm not losing this. I'm not having my season end to the Indiana Pacers in my building. I'm playing. Larry Bird. Now, if Kawhi wants to be on that level, you got to give it a shot in these next couple, last couple games. My own, and he did. Kudos, and that's kudos, kudos to everybody you just listed that play through injuries. There's plenty of guys that play through my, injuries my every only, day, and it never gets talked about because they, they don't publicize it. Yeah. The only thing that I would say to you, JJ, and I agree with you, not doggy on that point, but the only thing I would say to you is this. When you get upset with commentary like that, remember, there's a whole bunch of your contemporaries. There's a whole bunch of people that played in the league that shared that thinking. So there you have it. It's a bit of a longer segment, and I tried to include as much as possible. I think the point stands that Kawhi Leonard should not retire, and he should continue playing out his contract and trying to get healthy for the next season. But that doesn't change the fact that Mad Dog and Stephen A had some good points in that discussion. No matter how JJ Redick puts it, there are players that feel exactly the same way as those two. Up until recently, it was unheard of that a player goes out to warmups throwing down dunks and then doesn't play in the game. And it's not just players from the 1970s like J.J. Redick is saying. Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, all these guys played through injuries. The reality is, there's a mental hurdle for all of those guys. But it's about persevering and playing through it. If Zion Williamson tells you himself that he's fully healthy and able to play, and he's in warmups doing 360 dunks, why should we give an excuse for him not to play? Why can't we hold these millionaire athletes accountable? Because the money does matter too. These guys are getting paid an insane amount of money to play a sport that they love. All we want is for them to be on the court when the games matter. Because when they actually do get hurt, then we miss out on it. So when they're fully healthy, they should play the game of basketball. This isn't Stephen A and Mad Dog being haters. Old players feel exactly the same way. They earned their money. They were out there every night when they were healthy. They're not resting games. This whole idea of load management has gotten completely out of control. The San Antonio Spurs would rest their stars for meaningless games when their playoff seed was already secure and they had older players. Now, younger stars are resting games that will decide their entire season. We're not asking players to play on a broken foot or a torn Achilles. We're just making this point because old players did that. And all we're asking is the players that are healthy to play basketball. You guys saw the ratings of the All-Star game. The NBA is in a bad place if these stars continue to rest in the most meaningful games or even exhibition ones like the All-Star game. The players just don't care anymore and the fans are noticing. The league's ratings are going down whether we want to admit it or not. And this is a big reason for it. So yeah, Kawhi Leonard is actually hurt. He has a torn meniscus and he has trouble staying healthy and that sucks. He shouldn't retire. He should try again next year where he load manages for 30 games. But the reality is asking healthy players to play basketball isn't too much, 
especially when they're young superstars that can dunk in warmups. That's all I have for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the heated exchange between JJ Redick, Mad Dog, and Stephen A. Smith. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more NBA content just like this. And I will see you in the next upload.